This is John with the Everyday Bible Study. So glad to have you here with us today. We're looking at the Word of God. We're in the book of Mark. And uh, we're in the fifth chapter. And we're looking at, uh, we're going to look at a very miraculous story. Just one of the most wonderful miracles that Jesus had uh, done during his lifetime that we're aware of that was recorded. And we looked at another miracle that was uh, almost equally impressive. Uh, we looked at a man with a legion of demons, uh, possibly somewhere between 3,000 and 7,000 demons being cast out of him. And these demons were cast into a herd of pigs that they requested to be in instead of going straight to hell. And uh, they ended up, uh, the pigs went crazy, just like the man was crazy, running around in the tombs naked. And uh, that uh, the pigs went crazy and they uh, jumped over a cliff and cast themselves into the sea and died. And uh, just a horrific sight. Uh, but this man uh, gained his senses and uh, was sitting and talking to him and had put clothes on and uh, regained his right mind because these demons no longer uh, was in his life and in his heart and in his mind. And uh, so just wonderful how he got cleaned up by the power of Jesus Christ. Now we're going to see Jesus do something else that is possibly even more miraculous than that. And we're in uh, fifth chapter, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. If you'd like to follow along, follow along in any version that you may have. And uh, we're going to start with verse 21. And uh, it says here, And when Jesus had crossed again into the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was besides the sea. And then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, uh, Jairus by name. Seeing him, he, that he fell at his feet. And he was very, actually very, very sad and wanted Jesus to help out with a very important situation. And he implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with, uh, went with him. And said, A great crowd followed him and thronged uh, about him. And there was a, a, a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians. And uh, it does seem that way for us sometimes. Uh, sometimes doctors can't figure out how to cure what's wrong with us. And we go through many, many uh, different doctors sometimes with uh, these severe conditions. And uh, the, it seems like uh, what the doctors do put us through even more suffering. You know, if you look at oncology, uh, cancer treatment, chemotherapy, it, it, it seems like it is much more torturous sometimes than the cancer itself. And uh, I think it, oftentimes oncology is not extremely effective. And doctors know that, and that's why they're developing these gene therapies for when you have cancer, because they are more effective and they're much less taxing. I work as a drug abuse counselor and we work with a number of patients uh, that have hepatitis C and they've gotten this due to sharing uh, needles. Uh, whenever they have a drug addiction they're shooting up their drugs and uh, they uh, uh, have used a needle that somebody else has had and then this virus hepatitis C which is in another person's bloodstream gets into their bloodstream and it works to attack and destroy their liver or to give them liver cancer and uh, it's a very deadly disease. More pe twice as many people die of hepatitis C than do AIDS here in the United States. And uh, the treatment uh, for it at one time was a form of chemotherapy. It was a very torturous treatment. Not as bad as ke uh, cancer chemotherapy, but uh, it was largely ineffective. Uh, well, I wouldn't say largely ineffective. It was actually fairly effective. But it was really hard pe for people to stay on the treatment because it was so rough. Most people couldn't work while they were on the treatment, and they would go through wild mood swings, and sometimes their hair would fall out, and it would just be a very, very terrible thing for them to have to go through, but it beats losing your life. And uh, now they've developed new treatments, and uh, these new treatments uh, actually work to uh, cure the disease. The old version, uh, the disease would be cleared, but they'd keep having to take blood tests uh, because they'd pray, they were afraid that the disease would come back. They'd usually take blood tests for 10 or 15 years uh, to check to see if that the virus had come back. But these new tests, uh, new procedures, new drugs that they have are extremely effective and they cure the disease probably 95 to 98 percent of the time. The bad part is they're extremely expensive. Uh, these treatments, if you don't have insurance, usually run 
somewhere in the neighborhood of about $80,000 for a round of treatment. And unless we can get the insurance people uh, to pay for it, insurance companies, then uh, they uh, end up uh, uh, dying, you know, uh, potentially. And the disease doesn't kill everybody, but it kills a lot of people. Uh, so uh, uh, this is the situation we're facing with a lot of our clients that are in drug treatment. And uh, we have a situation here in this uh, particular story here that um, uh, this, this girl is so sick and Jesus is coming to her and says uh, there was another woman that was very sick that was coming to Jesus. She'd been to all these physicians. She couldn't get any better and she had a discharge of blood. You may say, what is that? Well, uh, whenever a woman has a period, they would, that was what they called a discharge of blood at that time. But uh, if, when a woman goes through her period, I, 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 you know, I'm no uh, perfect expert on this, but I'm thinking it normally lasts about five to seven days. And uh, then uh, her uh, womb is basically recreated on the inside, and uh, she's continued to be made fertile by this process uh, so that uh, uh, if she's in a situation where she has the potential to get pregnant, then this, uh, it's, it's a wonderful place for the egg to be, then the sperm can join it, and then conception can take place. And a uh, person continues to go through uh, this, uh, uh, have their period, uh, where uh, this, uh, this keeps on going on in a woman. And uh, it's just part of the natural process of um, what a woman has to go through. Uh, but, uh, and it can be a difficult time for them when they're going through their period. Uh, can have emotional swings. Uh, of course, you have bleeding that occurs, but um, this is one, one of the things that happens uh, in order that uh, new people can be born. And But said so this woman, uh, was situation was really messed up. She'd had this issue of blood or continuous bleeding for 12 years, probably had tremendous pain with it. Uh, she had something that was seriously wrong. And uh, so... Uh, she said here in verse 27, uh, we'll, we'll go back to verse 26, said that she had suffered under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. And she had heard the reports about Jesus and came uh, from behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. And let me tell you, this was a uh, even more difficult situation back then because uh, under the Jewish law, you were considered unclean while you were bleeding. And if anyone was to touch you while you were having your period, then they would have to do ceremonial washings, or they were, con they were considered unclean, and you were considered unclean. So you couldn't be touched by anyone. You couldn't be touched by your husband if you're married, and uh, no one could give you a hug, uh, even though you're going through this pain and going through this torture. And uh, if you can imagine, this woman probably had not been touched for, uh, what was it, 12 years? And um, so... Um, and basically, possibly, had been shunned by society. Uh, said uh, there that uh, she touched his garment, for she said, and I'm sure she's talking about saying to herself, even if I touch his garment, I will be made well. And immediately, the blood, flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And verse 30 said, and Jesus perceiving in himself that power had gone out of him, immediately turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my garment? And uh, his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around him and to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, uh, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. And uh, while he was speaking, um, there came about the rulers of the house, some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why well, trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they had said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. Those were the top three of the apostles. And they came into the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion. People were weeping and wailing loudly. And back then, they would often hire people uh, to be professional wailers. 
whenever there was a, a death in the family. And, uh, you know, it could have been some of these professional whalers, or it could have been family members that were just uh, so deeply, um, you know, in grief. Uh, but, pos but from this description, it sounds like they'd hired some of these professional whalers. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a, a commotion and weeping? This child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them out, all outside and took the child's father and mother, who were with him, and went in where the child was. And taking her by the hand, he said, uh, Talitha Kumai, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was twelve years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this. And he told them to give her something to eat. So here she was sickened to death, and then she actually died. And uh, so, But that didn't stop Jesus uh, from healing her, from bringing her back to, from, from death into life. And uh, then he, uh, she got up and started walking around. And he told her to, told her mom and dad to get her something to eat. You know that she was probably hungry, <laughs> and uh, so uh, uh, this wonderful thing that he did. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, a lot of times from a spiritual standpoint, we can be dead men and dead women, and uh, you know our our souls can uh, be so caught up in sin that it just strangles us and destroys us as to who we are. And we have no way to overcome that sin that has destroyed our life. And our conscience is seared. And uh, we hate who we are. But uh, the fact is that we can come to Jesus Christ and he can bring us life and make us living people again. And, uh, you know, I think there's a TV show on in the United States, and I imagine it's all over the world, uh, that's very popular called uh, The Living Dead. and Or The Walking Dead, I'm sorry. And, um, you know, in, in the TV show, I imagine they have some sort of virus or something, some disease that, uh, where they die, but they become zombies. And uh, so many people in this society that we live in has become uh, zombies of some sort of type. Uh, not that uh, they are physically dead, but it feels like their soul is dead. And uh, their soul is so caught up by sin, it's destroying their soul, destroying their life. And uh, just like... Uh, you know, we need uh, supernatural force to bring us back to life. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons that in the society we so love superhero movies and uh, because uh, they seem to have more life than normal people, more powers, more abilities. And Jesus was a real-life superhero. Uh, he didn't, you know, um, have great uh, bouts of strength or anything that we see Today, superheroes have, but he had powers that uh, uh, we don't see normally. Uh, he was able to heal. He was able to cast out demons, and he was able to feed great crowds. He was able to turn water into wine, and he was able to rise from the dead. And he has the ability to forgive us of our sins, too, because he was he is God. I, say, I was going to say was God, because Jesus Christ is still living today, and he has the ability to save us from our sins and uh, bring us back to life and to restore our soul and create a new heart within us. And, uh, but we have to believe on Jesus. Uh, we come to him by faith, not by any actions that we do, but we come to him uh, letting him know that we know that we are sinners and that we make a decision that we want to turn away from our sin, repent of our sin, ask for forgiveness for our sin, and that we want to turn toward Christ and believe on him, believe uh, on what Jesus Christ did on the cross, that he took the sins of all mankind, including my sins and your sin, and died on the cross. And when that sin, uh, uh, when he died, that sin died with him, that him being God. And that's a little hard to understand, but uh, he, he did that freely because God wanted him to do that. He did everything uh, in accordance with the will of the Father. And he died for our sins because it was God's plan from the beginning uh, for use that method to overcome the works of, of the devil. And our sin is done away with. He paid the price, paid the penalty. He was sinless uh, so that uh, 
but he took on, on all that sin that it absolutely would have destroyed us. Um, but uh, he uh, died for us and made us where God can see our hearts as white as snow. He did not sin. He had never sinned. And he was perfect. And uh, he, this perfection, uh, this righteousness, gets imparted, imputed to us so that uh, God can accept us and that uh, we can be cleaned up from the sin that would just utterly destroy us. And he can bring us to life, just like that little girl. And bring, he can do that for you, too. And uh, so we pray that you believe. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Dear Father, uh, we just pray that uh, the individuals that are watching this uh, can believe that Jesus Christ can bring them back to life, uh, can conquer uh, over the sin that's in their life, the sin that is utterly destroying their soul and their life. And Lord, help uh, the people that are watching this to fully realize that they are si sinners and that they need a Savior and that you have provided the Savior. You've provided hope for them and you've provided a way for them to gain uh, not just uh, life in this life, but eternal life, and that you can live with them forever, uh, that you can be with them forever, and they can live with you forever. And, uh, Lord, we pray that they will believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins on the cross, and that he rose from the dead the third day, and conquered over all sin and death. And, Lord, provide for them salvation. Help them to repent of their sins, and to believe on Jesus Christ. Lord, draw them to you. And, uh, uh, Lord, we pray that many will come to believe that Jesus Christ will save them, will lift them up out of death into brand new life, and will recreate them from the inside out through your power and through your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us with Everyday Bible Study today. We hope that if you heard this message and you, did not, you were not a believer, that you believed on Jesus Christ and that you gain salvation. If you've not done that yet, you can do that at any time. The uh, Bible tells us that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you can know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and have this transformation start to occur in your heart and allow Jesus uh, to work and uh, allow the Word to get into your heart as you continue to watch these Bible studies, read your Bible, and uh, get close to God. Let God's Word get into you and transform who you are and be made into God's image and get cleaned up from this death that, that is within us. Uh, so until next time, this is John with the Everyday Bible Study praying that you have a great day.